I don't think you realise how crazy this guy is. He's one of the greatest magicians of all time, who also does these super dangerous endurance stunts. But where's the line between what's real and what's a trick? That's real, that's not a trick. And how is this guy not dead? Because I've performed a lot of magic in my time and I know for a fact that there's clearly some form of actual danger to these stunts. Take his first one. I was buried alive in the coffin. I'll see you in about a week, I hope. What's the worst that can happen? I don't know, maybe oxygen deprivation, vital organs failing, coffin malfunction, the glass breaking and him getting crushed in a very well televised manner. And that's the tamest one. Some of the stuff he's done since then makes that look like child's play. I froze myself in a block of ice for three days and three nights. I stood on top of a hundred foot pillar for 36 hours. In London I lived in a glass box for 44 days with nothing but water. Like this is some out there stuff. We ain't talking about your run of the mill card tricks here. Were there any of your performances that you thought were going to be very difficult that were easier than expected? Nope. <laughs> Even the small scale stuff is out there. My advice would be not to do this trick. I'm gonna take your advice. <laughs> no. Here's where it gets interesting though, because sometimes you'll frame these things as if they're a magic trick. See how it looks like it's really starting to go in there? As if it's an illusion, but he's actually doing it. This isn't a trick. You're just sticking a needle through your arm. And then you think... He stuck a needle through his arm. You saw it, you saw it. Well, is he doing it? But... He couldn't have, because no one would do that. And that, my friends, is a ballsy double bluff. Some of the things you're doing, they're, they're just insane endurance and mental exercises. And then other things you're doing are what we, you would consider magic. Yeah, how do those two worlds collide? There might be some method behind the madness here, though. The things that I like are things that look impossible, but are actually really being done. And to properly explain, we need to go back to the early days, back when TV magic looked very different. But most of today's magicians, they're old, they're beat. Back when it was all big, glitzy stage illusions, proper carny, proper bleh. If somebody could really do magic, they wouldn't really have big patterns. Here there's no boxes, no stages, no sets, nothing, just people. So if you take magic and you put it in rough, real environments. Jack of clubs. That's really interesting, more than the tricks. See, I could do a classic trick, for example, the three card Monty, where the idea is you always got to keep your eye on the queen and you'll always be wrong. It's a lovely bit of sleight of hand, a great trick, but really, why do you care? Well, you care because a trick like that gets a reaction like this. Now you know what to follow, okay? So I do this, where's the queen? Yeah. I know you just, yeah, you just... Ah! Hold on, hold on, let's do it again. See, Blaine was the man who realized that what matters most isn't necessarily the trick, but the audience and their reaction. <laughs> Suddenly magic felt very different. He's made magic cool! Oh my god! It's these tricks where like, I'm right here, I don't know how you're doing it. He explodes onto the scene like a firecracker of charisma. Bang! <laughs> And if you're thinking, well, that doesn't sound like the David Blaine I know, good, you're still paying attention, because at the start, it wasn't exactly full of flamboyance, was he? I guess it's magic, you know. I'm just a showman. If anything, he came across as a bit odd. That's just you. The eye and the hand. People think that you signed some type of deal with the devil. But it wasn't accidental. Even though I act like I'm not reacting when I'm done doing magic and you see people reacting, I live off of their reactions. And it's not accidental how Blaine's act has changed over the years. During early YouTube days when all the tricks were kind of being exposed, I started thinking it would be really interesting to figure out how to do things that are real. See, in the early days of the internet, before magic exposure was such a big thing, Blaine was mainly doing pretty standard card tricks on the talk show circuits. So you can see that. Right. Cards go right on top, look. See what happens. But now, all his recent talk show appearances have involved some sort of weird, crazy stunt. Part of their goal is to obscure, to blur the lines between reality and what they do in magic. I mean, there is an argument to be made that him being a magician that does tricks does take away a little bit of the credibility from the endurance stuff. The idea that, you know, last week I was doing card tricks and now I can hold my breath a really long time yeah. just seems nonsense to me. But you could also argue that his magic is improved by the endurance stuff. That's what makes him special. It builds even more mystery around him because he actually is doing stuff that people think is impossible. He'll happily train himself to fly 25,000 feet in the air, carried only by balloons. So yeah, of course he can swap a couple of cards around. The man's on another level. 
<laughs> but David Blaine isn't the first man to take this approach. One of Blaine's biggest inspirations, and arguably the greatest showman of his time, Harry Houdini was a magician known the world over for blending tricks with reality. I would study books on Houdini, look at images of him, and I think it started to make me think about magic in a different way, about real versus tricks. You know, at the age of five, when you see a man chained up sideways to the side of a building, straight jacket, looking really scary, you don't forget that. When I was five, I said to my mom, I'm gonna be a magician one day, and she went, that's amazing! <laughs> In fact, the more you learn about Blaine's childhood, the more he makes sense as a person. My biological father, he overdosed on heroin and died, so I didn't, I never really knew him. My mother had a very difficult life. Because it was just me and her, she put everything in, in everything into her boy. She was a school teacher and she came from a very powerful family. She grew up from a very wealthy Jewish mafia family. That kind of corrupt money, she didn't want to be a part of that. After a suicide attempt when she was 18, and I think she left her family, left everything. When I was about five years old, my mother gave me a deck of cards and I would carry it everywhere that I went. We didn't have much, so the deck of cards meant the world to me. And when David learned his first trick with that deck of cards, it was his mother's reaction that started it all. So I do the trick and my mom goes crazy. Like it was, a, <laughs> <laughs> like it was the best thing ever. And she jumped around like she had seen the most amazing thing ever. I became obsessed with, with doing magic and getting her reaction. She was very loving, very affectionate. She always dreamed of me going, you know, to a great school, but when she got sick with cancer, that wasn't an option. The suffering that she endured and, and how she found so much beauty out of it, I think that sort of planted the seed to you know, what is there on this other side of enduring things? When things are tough and they're difficult, that's when I'm alive. And it's that whole journey of pushing yourself to do things that you physically don't think you can do. That's the best part. I do believe that comfort puts a complete damper in, in being creative or getting anything done. I like that you can override your body with your brain to do things right. that seem like they're not real. But this hunger for what's real has come at a cost. In London, I lived in a glass box for 44 days with nothing but water. My heart wall, my BM, my bone mass index, everything decreased by about 33%. I lost 60 pounds in 44 days. I think I went into mild organ failure. At the end of the stunt, when I went to the hospital, I almost went into shock and probably could have died. That one I feel like I never fully recovered from. It did real damage. I don't know, I wouldn't recommend anybody does that. This man is not scared of hurting himself, if anything, he encourages it. I, I wasn't afraid, you know, if, if a shark bites my leg off, so be it. <laughs> There's a trick that's seen countless number of magicians get injured, the smash and stab. That's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sharp. It's a nail with the wooden block inside of the bag. <sighs> it's a nasty one to get wrong. Are you joking? No. Even the thought of it. <laughs> Many of the people out there didn't want this to work. And Blaine has done it before in his specials absolutely fine. Yeah. They wanted this to go wrong. But recently, live in front of an audience at his Vegas show, it didn't go to plan. Get me on three. One. Uh oh. Two. Ah! Woo! That wasn't good. Damn it. <laughs> that was not great. Um, and what does he decide to do? He cleans up the blood and carries on. And our man David only decided he liked the trick after he hurt himself doing it. And before we look at Blaine's most dangerous stunt, the stunt that led his top consultant to quit on the spot. David, we're not doing it again. Of course we are, we're not doing Why it again. Why did I quit? You can't I'm doing it right now. We need to thank this video's sponsor, One Ahead. In fact, you've just been looking at one of the 200 odd articles in the back catalog. See, One Ahead is a weekly magic newsletter keeping 15,000 magicians, well, one ahead. And all the news and the basic content, that's free, but the good stuff, oh, that's members only. We're talking instant access to the entire archives, including secrets behind your favorite magic shows, exclusive interviews, techniques you won't learn anywhere else, as well as a load of trick tutorials, which are honestly really good. There's a lottery prediction trick with a self-working method that's just 
mind-blowing. There's all sorts of goodies, but honestly, my favourite part is having really interesting articles emailed to you once a week. Every time I get that notification, bang, I'm straight on it. And you get instant access to the paid subscription, free for 30 days when you use my affiliate link, oneahead.com forward slash jack. I'll leave a link in the description below. Just make sure you claim the deal before it's gone and you don't regret all your life choices. Now, where were we? David Blaine injured himself on stage again. Do not attempt to duplicate any of these dangerous acts and witness starting the show. You feel like the audience sort of kind of watches to see if something will go wrong? I think there's a percentage of, of people that do. As there is a significant risk of injury, or even death. Because I know I would be there waiting to see something go wrong. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, shit. He falls nine stories high into a load of cardboard boxes. He then suffers a, quote, horrific shoulder injury. But rather than end the show, he gets five doctors out of the audience. And over the course of half an hour, in full view of the audience, they manage to finally pop his shoulder back into place. Except four minutes later, it then pops out again. So Blaine finishes the show with one good arm, which includes, by the way, a 10 minute underwater breath hold. Granted, you don't need your arms to breathe, but still, at this point, it's, it's almost comical. And full credit to the doctors who helped out and this team that are always there on standby. Well, I say always. There was that one time. Let's talk about the bullet catch. The most dangerous trick that's ever been done in show business. And this one is dangerous. 12 magicians that we know have died during the bullet catch. The most famous one being a magician called Chung Ling Su. He was in London performing the bullet catch and the bullet catch went wrong, the gun fired and killed him in front of a live audience. And that, by the way, was an illusion version of the trick. Blaine wanted to do it for real. It's such a risk that I couldn't even get insurance. My advice to him uh, from the start was... Not to do it. Exactly. <laughs> and he did it for real, the method being... Put a metal cup in your mouth, have a bullet shot into the metal cup. And he pulled the trigger himself. I think if we put a string onto the trigger, put a laser on a scope, and then, you know, <laughs> and of course, he had to do it live in Vegas in front of 20,000 people. If anything goes wrong, it will be a disaster right here and right now. The part that I didn't really spend enough attention on was building a better mouth guard. Blaine's lead consultant, an amazing magician himself, as he wind, he already had his doubts. I have to admit that something that I still don't fully understand. This idea of putting your life on the line. And lo and behold, it didn't go as planned. I'm very nervous. You are? Oh. Up slightly, up slightly. Stop, stop. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The mouth guard broke. This popped off. This whole thing came off. My top magician consulted me, so if you do this again, we're worried I'm not helping you at all. David, we're not doing it again. Of course we are. We're not doing Why it again. I quit. I'm telling you right now. Hate me. I don't care. I will not help you with this ever again. Now, in some ways, the guy we've been discussing is the old David Blaine. Now that I have a daughter, I don't even want that risk anymore. Watching her grow and learn and supporting that, that's, that's, that's my priority now. Yeah. And although he's still getting injured, maybe this is more of a calculated risk. You did it! This is all for you! Because none of these stunts are going to kill him. <laughs> Properly. This is your... Oh my God. What? Oh, Jesus, what are you doing? But that's the point, he's a showman. Probably the greatest in the world right now. And there's clearly a lot of thought gone into this. I think most magicians, including myself, become all consumed in magic. You, you clearly love what you do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe this isn't the paradox. Maybe this is what he wants. Whether you think it's real or it's a trick, maybe none of that matters. Maybe what matters is the fact that we're even talking about it. <laughs>